the following day you think, <clears throat> I'm never gonna do this again. And then a few months go by and you think, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Maybe I will do it again. Well, uh, thanks for being here, Alex. Uh, welcome to TDA Talks. I usually just get everyone to start by telling us their name, where they're based, and uh, what are some of your, uh, what are some of the bike adventures you've done in your life? Sure. Thanks, Shani. Yeah. Happy to be here. My name is Alex Gay. I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm part of Ride with GPS. It's a software company that creates route planning and navigation. Ride with GPS provides all of the navigation for TDA's tours. Some bike adventures that I always think about are um, long rides, which is kind of what, what I uh, like to do. Long single day rides. Um, big, big one for me was uh, two summers ago, um, about 10 coworkers and I went to a town called Burns, Oregon. It's okay. uh, seven hours from Portland and it's in, it's in the desert, a uh, high desert. And um, there's a race there called the Skull 120. And I did the, the, long, the long ride, the 120 mile ride, I guess uh, 129 miles technically. Wow. Uh, but uh, it's a pretty chunky gravel route that you know covers a lot of different uh, a lot of different terrain. Uh, you even get up into some alpine area, and it was just a, a long transcendent day of lots of pedaling and and gravel. And it was just a, a fun weekend with friends and uh, doing something uh, doing something ridiculous something <laughs> that um, you know with the following day you think <clears throat> I'm never going to do this again and then a few months go by and you think that was a lot of fun yeah maybe I will do it again but um, some coworkers went back to, to ride it again and I think I, I plan to do it next year um, but luckily on that same day that the skull was going this year, I was able to do my own really long bike ride where I rode from Eugene, Oregon, all the way to Portland, Oregon. And yeah, another long transcendent day, all pavement, really flat, lots of wind, riding alone, but it was still a lot of fun. And I, I think it gave me a lot of confidence to keep riding longer single day rides like that. And for both of those events you mentioned, you used the word transcendent. Um, what, what does that mean to you like on a bike trip to, to have something, because uh, that's a big word, like, and I don't disagree. I've, I feel like I've had those experiences too, but what, what does that mean to you? What is, what is mm -hmm. transcendent, having a transcendent experience on a bike trip? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's thinking, about starting at 5 a.m., riding until 8 p.m. and thinking like, was this, and then looking back in it, uh, at it and thinking, was, was that all the same day? Like, I remember doing this, I, I remember this part of the route and this cool road or this feature or this animal I saw. And then thinking about that same route um, at a different point and thinking like, oh, I remember this part too, but like it's it just being such a long effort and so many thoughts go through your head through sitting on your bike for so many hours that sometimes it just feels all chopped up of like of where your memories fall within that. Um, and covering just such a long stretch of, of road where, you know, when I, I started in for this, recent ride I did in, in Eugene, um, riding all the way to Portland. Like I've been in a car for that stretch along the freeway dozens and dozens of times. Um, but this time I, I rode it on my bicycle all by myself. And to think like, 
I would, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I never would have thought to ride my bike. Um, yeah. And just knowing that all under my own power, I, I did that. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I think about when something is, is transcendent to me. So you mentioned you work for Ride with GPS. Um, do you mind just telling us a little bit about uh, what the company does? Yeah, so Ride with GPS is a software company that creates mapping tools and navigation primarily for cyclists, but it's used by many, many different people for different things. Um, but our, our main focus is cycling. And um, it's a, a place where you can plan a route on our website or on our mobile app, and then download it offline on our mobile app on your phone. Uh, and it, when it's offline, you can uh, view it when you're in airplane mode, you can uh, see the route and all the details in it uh, if you don't have cell service, and then you're able to navigate it so that you can get turn-by-turn -turn voice navigation from the app. So as you approach a turn, the, the phone will emit a chime and then tell you to turn right onto First Street. Uh, and so you don't have to be looking down at your bike computer or your paper cue sheet. You can right. just have your eyes up on the road, listen for the cue and uh, take in the scenery rather than staring at your, your cue sheet for, for miles and miles. You're going to help us with some tips for people who use the app in a moment. I just wanted to ask a few more uh, general questions for you related to to Ride with GPS and and sort of GPS navigation in general. So my first question was: um, You guys have a feature that people can use called Ride Reports, and uh, I was wondering if you could just briefly explain that. My understanding it's almost like a, a blogging platform for people who use your app. Yeah, that's right. Ride Reports is a part of our website where you can um, create a, a blog that you can pull your, your ride map into it. You can add photos to it. You can then you know, write, write up uh, what happened on that trip or that ride and then share it with, with your friends. And it also be available on our website. Um, if it gets a lot of traction, uh, or if it's an especially good ride report, a lot of times we'll add those to our featured ride reports page. Okay. Which there's some pretty cool, cool ride reports on there. Um, I think my favorite one was one that uh, a gentleman put together from a trip that he and his brother did from uh, back in the 70s, where they rode from the UK to India. And awesome. so this man took a lot of time um, scanning photos, writing up, wow. um, writing up, you know, descriptions of all these different legs of the trip. But he also had to recreate this route using the route planner since he didn't have a GPS yeah. recording of his ride of him and his brother's ride from from back in the 70s so that's pretty to... cool that people are using it like uh retroactively almost that you know mm -hmm. thinking about rides they did years ago so that's that's something i hadn't hadn't considered awesome well we'll put a we'll put a link to your featured ride reports in, under the under the video um but when you were talking about the gentleman who rode from the uk to india and how he would have had paper maps and and then recreated as gps it it sort of leads me to my next question that we as a company, so we use Ride with GPS tools for organizations and we love them, they, they work really well for us. But we were very like slow to come around to GPS. Like we were uh, very much a company that really likes paper maps. You know, we really enjoy the, the art of navigation, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, uh, with all progress there, you know, you lose some things, right? And so, might be a funny question for you working with Ride with GPS, but you know, have you worked with paper maps and how do you balance sort of that loss of the sort of discovery and the, the, the skills you have to learn to use paper maps 
with like the convenience that Ride with GPS offers. And you know, how do you feel about like what's sort of been lost with with GPS? Yeah, I I grew up reading maps for my own navigation with hiking and backpacking. Um, and then when I started getting into cycling more, use paper maps and cue sheets. Um, and for me then it was, there was always like some anxiety around knowing, needing to know where I was or the anxiety of missing a turn and not realizing it. And, you know, a number of times getting lost and having to retrace my steps to get back to where I was. <clears throat> um, but what, what I like about having GPS is the confidence to know that I'll be going the right way um, as I planned it or as the route that I found that someone else created. Um, it reduces a lot of that anxiety and it gives me confidence to find a route from someone I know or the, someone that, that I trust to know that this route is going to be good. I can use it and find new places that I've never been before, but know that when I'm navigating it, uh, I'm not gonna get lost. Or if I do make a wrong turn, my phone will tell me and I can get back on course because I can see the roads that I took to, to get off course. It's a really good point. I think like we we used to rely much heavily more heavily on paper maps but in a sense for people that are maybe it was their first bike trip with a company um maybe they aren't used to using paper maps and so we were in a, in a way imposing our our system and, and almost requiring people to have a certain level of navigation that not everyone has or never not everyone is interested in learning so you know the the gps is a great way to for people to walk onto a group tour and immediately have some confidence that they can they can get from point a to point b and not worry about it because for our trips unlike some group trips you know you're all packed together and you follow a lead car or something ours everyone rides at their own pace and and so there's that that great freedom built into our trips but at the same time if you're reliant only on the paper maps um it can be intimidating for sure so yeah that's a good point thanks okay well um if you would like to, Alex, it would be great if you could sort of run through some of the basics of Ride With GPS uh, for the typical person who might come on a trip like ours. So, um, you know, we send them a bulletin with a link um, that connects them to our, our Ride With GPS event. Um, so did you wanna walk through some of the steps that they would follow? Yeah, certainly. Um, I'll share my screen. Uh, so uh, TDA uses Ride with GPS to navigate routes using our mobile app. Uh, when you're uh, provided a, a special link from TDA that allows you to RSVP to the event, and then that allows you to download and navigate the routes for your tour on our app for free. So no subscription necessary. Those are typically features that do require a subscription, but since you're on a trip with TDA, you don't have to pay for those, to use those features. Um, so uh, on the screen now is a, a link and I'm going to copy this and add it to my browser and it RSVPs me to this event. Um, now, if I didn't already have an account with Ride With GPS, I would be asked to create an account for free. Uh, or if I wasn't already signed into our website, I would be asked to sign in. Uh, so I, I was signed in. So here I am on our website and you can see that I are, I've RSVP'd to uh, the, the pub ride that TDA does. But what we want is to use our app. So here is my phone pulled up on the screen. 
Oh, and I need to log in. So I can tap log in. And sign into the app. And now I'm logged in and I want to find my event. And I can do that either by tapping event here on the center of the screen mm -hmm. and then tap my tour. And I can look at all the routes. Um, but what I want to do is make sure these are downloaded for offline use. And I can download all of these at the same time by tapping the three dots in the upper right and tap download all. So now uh, these are all downloading and I'll wanna make sure I keep the screen on while these are saving for offline use. Um, so here, this one's going along. Um, I can- And how long does the download typically take, Alex? I guess it might depend on your phone. Yeah, it depends on your phone and your Wi-Fi speed, um, but uh, it doesn't take too, too long. You know, here I've got oh, yeah. medium speed Wi-Fi and it's, uh, uh, you know, for a, a 60 mile route, it takes less than a minute. Right. So in, in the case for s some of the longer tours is like that TDA does, it might take a little while, um, mm -hmm. but eventually they'll they'll all be downloaded um once they are saved you'll see this um compass icon that means it's saved for offline use and you also see that it says navigate um, instead of pause and so uh, when i want to navigate one of these routes I've, i can either come to my offline tab like i am here so by tapping library and then offline and that's where all of my offline routes will live. But I can also go from my event. Okay. And I can tap to view the route. And even before I navigate, I can do uh, a couple things where I can get, inspect the route a little more, see what's, see what's on the route, where it goes. I can tap this icon uh, here to uh, make it full screen. If I wanted to hide the metrics, zoom in. Yeah. Uh, tap that to show the metrics again. On the left here, there's this map options. And if I'm connected to Wi Fi or cell data, I'll be able to change the map styles. Uh, by default, the RWGPS map style is saved for offline use. Uh, but if you're connected to, uh, to Wi-Fi or cell data, you can change it to other map styles. Uh, just note that if you do that while you're out in the field with not connected to Wi-Fi, it will use cell data uh, to to show that different map style, any other map style that's not RWGPS. Okay. Uh, I can pull this up to expand and I can see a little more detail on the elevation profile. I tap elevation, you can see, interact with that. So you can see how high up this climb is. Right, so it has a corresponding dot on the map to where your elevation graph is, right? Yeah, so uh, wherever the line is uh, vertically here, uh, then is, uh, shows that blue dot on, on the route line. Great. Also tap Q sheet to see where the cues are. If I tap on one, It'll show on the map. Zoom in to see more detail. And some more uh, stats down here. Now, uh, when I'm ready to ride, I can tap 
the orange navigate button and that'll open up the route. So there's the route. Uh, and if I were at the start, it would start giving me cues to follow this route, audio cues. Um, and like on the previous page where you can interact with the elevation profile or the cue sheet, you can still do that here on the, uh, the navigation screen. So we, Rider GPS, in addition to our mobile app, offers the ability to add these routes to your Garmin or your Wahoo bike computer. Um, both of these have options to use routes from our website or app on your Garmin or Wahoo wirelessly, where you can set up either on our website, in the case of Garmin, or on the Wahoo Element app for uh, Wahoo users, uh, where you can pin a route and it's sent to your bike computer wirelessly. And uh, when, if you're using our app, when you download a route for offline use, it's also pinned. So if you've previously set up this wireless sync through Garmin or Wahoo, those routes would be added to your device. So you can have it on your bike computer to navigate and also have on our app to reference with the map where you can zoom in its color. Uh, if there's any uh, points of interest added, you'd be able to, to view those. Uh, Garmin users can also add routes with a wired connection from the computer. So you can export a route file to your computer and then load it to your Garmin while it's plugged into your computer. All of this can be found uh, with in-depth help documentation on our website, ridewithgps.com. And um, you can find our support help pages there. We also have a great support team if you need help with anything. Right, you can email info at ridewithgps.com. Do you have any, so a lot of our uh, customers do end up using a phone and some of them, you know, just sort of refer to the map um, on occasion, but a lot of them do like to have it mounted on their handlebars and, and try to use the navigation tool. Um, do you have any tips for people of, uh, for them to like conserve battery on their phone? Cause that's often the, the sort of limiting factor for the phone. Yeah, certainly. So the number one thing to conserve battery, whether it's using our app or any other app is to keep the screen off. So the screen will use the most battery out of anything on your phone. So right. if you're navigating a route on Ride with GPS, keeping the screen off as, as much as you can is a good way to reduce battery use. Um, when you're navigating a route, you'll get audio cues. So uh, you'll, you'll hear it from the phone speaker and also when you reach a queue, you'll also get a push notification on the lock screen. So sure. instead of, so the, the, the screen will illuminate for a few seconds with the turn instructions, you'll hear the queue and then it'll turn off. So it's not staying on. So keeping the screen off is a big, a big thing. Another thing is having the route you're navigating in offline, having it downloaded offline. So which right. like I, how I walked through on, on the app, saving thing, saving the routes, um, that's going to prevent you from having to use battery uh, or as much battery since you're not calling from the cell towers every second to get information. And another thing is to use airplane mode. So if you're, right. especially if you're riding in a place where you don't have reliable cell service, your phone's going to want to uh, use more battery. So if you can put your phone in airplane mode, you're going to use a lot less battery. So I can go on a long day long ride and not even use 50% of my battery with mm. minimizing the screen time phones phone in airplane mode with the route offline uh, for longer, you know, for rides where I have 
I might want to rely more on the visual map itself. Um, or if it's, I just want the sense of security, I will carry a, a portable battery pack with me. Yep. Just so uh, I don't want to be in the middle of nowhere with no, no power. You, you guys have sort of built in some social elements of ride with GPS, like the, the ride reports that I mentioned earlier, but you can, you can now like share to other social media services and stuff. It, do you see that as, as uh, important? And again, maybe you're not the right person to ask, but do, do you see this as something that uh, Ride with GPS wants to grow, like to make it like uh, have communities within Ride with GPS? Yes, certainly. We, we want our users finding more new stuff, more routes, better routes, routes that they've never ridden before. Um, and that's what I think it makes, makes Ride with GPS special is that there's thousands of routes, you know, even you know, in, your, in your own backyard that you might not know about because you just have never happened upon those roads yep. or it's just a, a direction that you never go from leaving your front door. And, you know, we have the best library of routes and we want people to leverage that to go on more rides more often and those are better rides another new thing that's been released is called uh, regions where it's a uh, a page dedicated to an area that will have different routes from different users that we know are good. They're good routes um, based on some criteria that we can infer. Um, and then we put them all on this single page that you can find. So if I'm traveling to a new area, I can look at this region page, have a dozen routes to choose from that I know are going to be high quality and instead of going to our find page and looking through a thousand routes and not knowing what is good, yeah. how, do I, how do I make the decision of what route to do? And how do I know, um, you know that it's still a good route? So um, the region page is one thing to solve that problem where you can find a new route and use it also find if there's any cycling clubs in that area, uh, cool. different ride reports in that area. Um, so I think that'll be, I think that'll be a really powerful thing to get people out on to, to new rides. And you know, I look at the region for Portland and there's routes or roads on routes that I've never ridden before. And I'm excited to go discover those because it's just, you know, I, I have my handful of roads that I always find myself on and I want to try something new. Yeah, I, I find I've been more and more using Ride with GPS for that very reason, just uh, discovering new routes and rides in my own area. So it's a great, great way to use it for sure. If you enjoyed navigating a route with TDA, you're able to plan your own route on ridewithgps.com. Or if you're a subscriber, you can use our mobile app, Route Planner, uh, and then you're able to use those routes for, for your own adventures. So yep. um, don't limit your use to just when you're on a tour to, to, with TDA or, or anyone else. Um, so you can you know, use, use our tools to, to make your own fun. Well, Alex, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to walk through the, the information for our customers and uh, and the rest of the conversation. I really, really enjoyed speaking with you. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad we could have this talk. Yeah, thanks a lot and uh, have a great afternoon. You too.